everybody, this is Mr. Kite coming to you again from the Lab 207 web, webcast. Glad to have you with us today. As you can see, we're starting into a new unit today. It's going to be all about cells. So today's lecture is going to be compare and contrast, and then there's probably five more that are going to follow this. So stick with us as we move our way through this series and learn about the cell. As always, we're going to start out with some objectives for the day. So here you go, falling from the top. Describe the difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells and compare and contrast plant and animal cells. Now this should be a review from your basic biology course that you took once upon a time. So let's go ahead and get going, starting with what they have in common. So all cells have got a few things in common, and they are as follows. Every single cell has got a plasma membrane. That would be the flexible phospholipid bilayer that surrounds the outside of the cell. Even if they have a cell wall, as in the case with a plant, they still have a plasma membrane on the inside of that cell wall. Every cell also has cytosol. You probably know this as cytoplasm. It's the jelly-like substance that is in the middle of the cell. The third thing all of them have are chromosomes, which would be genetic material. And finally, every cell has got ribosomes. So it doesn't matter what the cell is, it's got the basic machinery that it needs to make proteins and get some work done that allows it to live. So let me uh, talk a little bit about prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. And it always comes down to words in science. So first word is prokaryote. Pro means before. Karyote comes from the Greek karyon, which means seed. In this case, they take it to mean nucleus. So prokaryote literally means before nucleus. Eukaryote means true nucleus. EU, anytime you see that in science, it means true. And then karyote from karyon, which is seed. So we've got true nucleus. So let me get out of the way and we'll talk about some differences between the two starting with our prokaryotes versus our eukaryotes. Let me call up my pen real quick so I can point some things out. Major things to note that are different between these two types of cells. Um, make sure that you understand that these two cells form all of the living world. Our prokaryotes right here, these guys are only found in the bacteria and the archaea. Eukaryotic cells make up the rest of the living world. So major differences between them. First one comes down to their genetic material. If you'll note, our prokaryotic cell right here, he's just got a wad of DNA. That is known as the nucleoid region. It's not surrounded by anything. There's no membranes around it. It's just kind of a wad of DNA that hangs out in the middle. If you look at our eukaryotic cell over here, he has got a nice membrane-bound nucleus. And that theme of having membrane-bound organelles runs all the way through. That's one of the big things that defines a eukaryotic cell from a prokaryotic cell. Eukaryotic cells have got all of their organelles all nicely bound up and defined. Prokaryotes, not so much. Other things to note between prokaryote and eukaryote, like I said, is the size. You can see they have both got ribosomes between the two. Beyond that, there's not much that is similar between them. So make sure that you remember major differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, no membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes are smaller. Eukaryotes are bigger. No true nucleus. They got a wad of DNA and true nucleus. Those are the major divisions between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So let's talk about eukaryotic cells and divide them into two categories. You've got your plants versus your animals. Now, I have students all the time get the fact that there are differences between the two. So let's talk about some of these specific differences between the two. If you'll note, both of these are eukaryotic cells. You see all of those membrane-bound organelles hanging out in there. You see a true nucleus. You can see a plasma membrane around the inside there and around here. Now let's talk about the differences between the two. The first major difference is if you look at our plant cell right here, it's got a cell wall. This is this wall that surrounds the outside of our plant cell. Now, as we talked about a while back, the cell wall is made up of a carbohydrate called cellulose. It's a structural carbohydrate, and we do not find that in animal cells. Animal cells need to be flexible. They need to be able to move. They need to be able to change shape. Plant cells don't so much need to do that. Our next big difference between the two is plant cells I've got this central vacuole right here. Now that is a big storage chamber that holds on to water to keep our plant cell alive and standing upright. If you notice over here in our animal cells, our animal cells do have small vacuoles, but they don't have that giant central water tank vacuole in them like a plant cell has. Next major difference between the two is our plants 
have got chloroplast, which you can think of as like solar panels. They take in sunlight and they turn out carbohydrates. Our animal cells, no chloroplast in there. We don't have the ability to photosynthesize anything. Now, one misconception that I often get is that plant cells don't have mitochondria. You need to make sure that you understand, look up here, plant cells do have mitochondria just like an animal cell. Now, why do plant cells have mitochondria? Well, sun's not shining all the time. They still need to be able to manufacture energy in the absence of sunlight, you know, at night. So make sure that you understand that plant cells have got a mitochondria in it. And with that, we have gone over the differences between our plant cells and our animal cells. So recapping, similarities, they have got membrane-bound organelles. They are about the same size. They are eukaryotic cells. They have a true nucleus, and they both have mitochondria. Differences, plant cells have got a central vacuole, they have got chloroplast, and they have got a cell wall surrounding them. So I hope that little refresher kind of got you on page for the rest of our unit together. Please join us next time in the Lab 207 webcast. Have a good day.